Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Amazon Kindle Voyage. This is Amazon's premium e-ink reader. Retails for $199 versus the $79 and $119 of their cheaper offerings. So what does the Kindle Voyage offer? Well, it gives us the highest resolution e-ink display of the group at 300 pixels per inch, so the text looks really pin sharp. That compares to the 167 and 212 PPI of the cheaper Kindles. Now, like all Kindles, this comes standard with Wi-Fi, or you can add a 3G version, which gives you free 3G service service for only $70 above the standard base price. Now the base price of $199 includes special offers so you will see ads on your Kindle but you can buy one without special offers for only $20 more at $219. The new Kindle Voyage also features an adaptive front light that basically means there is an ambient light sensor like you would see on a tablet that adjusts the backlighting based on your ambient lighting conditions. This is also the thinnest Kindle ever at 6.7 inches. It's also the lightest Kindle available right now at only 6.3 ounces. The Voyage also features features a completely flush design so there is no recession between the display and the bezel. This also features a unique page press design so basically all I have to do is squeeze the bezel to turn pages. Alright so let's go and crack into our Kindle here and see what we get. So we have pretty easy packaging here with a little tab to pull. Alright so let's go ahead and lift the lid here and there is our Kindle in its little cradle. Let's just pop that out so you can see it's wrapped in plastic here. Let's go ahead and peel that off right now. Just slide it right out and there we go. Very familiar design from Amazon's Fire tablets as well here. So it's been picked up here on the e-readers. Uh, we'll set this aside for just a moment so we can see what's in here. So we have a little quick start, guys. So again, just one piece of paper here tells you to connect it and charge it, what the buttons do, that sort of thing, and the terms of use and the important product information. We also have a USB charging cable, Kindle branded. There is no wall adapter here, but of course, any USB port on your computer or any existing wall adapter you might use for your phone will work to charge your Kindle, but of course you can buy it separately as well. All right, so let's go ahead and start this up for the first time. Again, very light, only 6.3 ounces. I'm just going to press and hold the power button up here in the upper right corner. All right, the first thing we need to do here is select our language. As you can see, we do have a full touch screen here. Click next. So while that's booting up, you can see that the display again is completely flush with the bezels and it has an anti-glare coating here, so it works pretty well outdoors. We gotta connect to our Wi-Fi here, so we're gonna select our Wi-Fi and log into my time capsule with my password. So right away I can see that the backlighting is on automatically and it does contribute to a higher contrast display so the blacks look deeper and the whites look whiter. First thing I need to do here is log in or create an Amazon account. Now because I purchased this through Amazon, it automatically logged in with my account so I can go ahead and continue with the setup. I can also link my Facebook and Twitter accounts and I'll do that later. Now you can log in with your Goodreads account or create a new one. I'm just going to skip that for now. Next up is a little tutorial explaining how the device works, but we're going to show you that in this video. All right, so let's take a close look at the design. Again, very lightweight and very thin with a sort of origami design on the back with a soft touch texture material, which is prone to picking up fingerprints and grease from your hands. So you can see our Amazon logo embossed toward the center. No Kindle branding here, which is interesting. You can see up here we have this glossy panel again, just ornamental, I believe, nothing really functional. And then you have your button along the back, which is actually really nice. It keeps the tablet really thin while giving you a nice large uh, power button to turn on and off. It's the only button on the entire e-reader. On the front, we have a six inch display, again, 300 pixels per inch with a backlight, which is adaptive. And that adaptive backlight needs an ambient light sensor, which is in the upper left corner right there. Now on either side of the bezel, we have these page press buttons, which respond to pressure, not just touch, even though they're not physical buttons. So for example, if you want to advance the page, just press and hold the advanced page button on the bottom here. And if you want to go back, press the back button here. Now there is a little vibration motor in here, so you do get a little haptic feedback when you press these buttons. Now you will not find a headphone jack, a microphone, or a speaker. You will find a micro USB charging port at the bottom, and that's it. All right, so let's go and take a look at our interface. And as you can see, because I have the one with special offers, I do get an advertisement on the front page before I unlock the device. So you can see here, this is a little ad for the power adapter, which is not included with your e-reader. So I'm just going to press the power button to wake it up and slide to unlock it. And it'll take me right to the home screen. So you can see on the home screen, a pretty familiar interface. You can see what's on your device right now. So these are books that have been installed already or downloaded already. We also have some recommendations. And again, we have some special offers at the bottom. You can also select cloud to see what's uh, available on your account. So these are all books that are available on my account. These have been purchased through Amazon and I can just tap on any one of them to download them. So if I wanna tap on this book and I can see it now on my device. Now, if you look closely up here, you can see you can limit what displays here by all items, books, 
periodicals, if you subscribe to any documents or collections. Right now I just have books selected, but I can also select all items. You can also select how these are ordered, so you can order them by recent, title, author, or collection. So let's go ahead and open one of these books. So you can see it opens up right away and it picks up where I last left off, no matter what device I've read this book on. So again, we have a touch screen here. So we can use these page press buttons along the side to advance to the next page or reverse. Alternatively, you can also just swipe on the screen to navigate. So you can left swipe to advance the page, right swipe to reverse the page. You can also tap uh, the right side of the device to advance the page and tap the left side of the device to reverse. You can also swipe up from the bottom to see your your scrubber. So this allows us to scrub between our pages here. So we can advance and see preview of the page or we can exit here and resume where we last left off. So again, let's swipe up here. You can scrub the page, you can advance the page, and if this is the page you want, just tap on it, brings you right to it. Now, if we tap the top of the screen, you can see it brings up our menu. That includes the home button, the back button, as well as our lighting controls. So you can see I have auto brightness enabled. That means the ambient light sensor will automatically adapt to the brightness in the room. I can also unselect this and manually control my brightness if I prefer. So I'm gonna set it to maximum here, almost maximum, there we go. And then we also have shopping. So we can go to our Amazon store to make more purchases and I can search the store like so. I can also go to the Amazon store to shop for more books and I can just press the back button to go back to where I last left off. I can also search up here. So I can search for terms in this book. I can search for my items, all text, the Kindle store, Goodreads, the dictionary or Wikipedia. So for example, let's go ahead and search this book and let's go ahead and search for Apple. So obviously the word Apple appears 1,294 times in this book, and you can scroll through them to find exactly where you want to go. We also have Goodreads, which is kind of a social networking for readers. This allows us to see recommendations and see what other readers on our account are doing. Now there are a few other things in here. So we can change our font. So we can change our font size, the font style, line spacing, and margins. So again, if you just select it, it does update in real time. So you can see the exact effect as you're doing it. Alternatively, you can also just pinch in and out to adjust your font size. Now under go to, this is where we can jump to a chapter or a specific page in the book. So you can see all the chapters are broken down for you and you can also select your page or location manually just by entering it in. Now we have another powerful feature here called X-Ray. It's not available on all books, but it's available on many books sold through Amazon, such as Steve Jobs here. So you can see it breaks down all the major characters, locations, names, that sort of thing on this page within the chapter or throughout the book. And you can see these little timelines here that tells us where exactly those terms appear. So for example, on this page, it sees all these major names. And for example, if we wanna look at the Apple store, so we can scroll through the pages in which this term appears and we can tap on it to bring up that page. Now, if you tap and hold on a word here, such as flourish, brings up a dictionary or we can bring up Wikipedia. And if it was an X-ray term, you can also select it to see where that term appears elsewhere in the book. Now under dictionary, you can see more. This allows us to highlight the text, add a note, share it with one of our social networks, either Twitter, Facebook, you can also translate it. We have the open dictionary, so we can open the dictionary app, or you can report a content error. Now, if you tap and drag, you can actually highlight text here. So let's go ahead and highlight this entire section. You can highlight, you can add a note, you can share it again with one of your social networks, or you have more controls. Now, if you go ahead and highlight it, it now adds to your list of highlighted text, which you can refer to later. Now, if we go back to our menu, you can see we can also bookmark this page and you can see how many bookmarks we've added previously. You can also share this again with one of your social networks. So you can make a comment and a link to the book will appear in your comment. Now, if you bring up our menu again, you can go to additional options and one of them is vocabulary builder. So if you've ever searched for a term while reading the book, all of those terms will appear here. So you can select the word to see the definition, see its usage, you can delete it or select mastered. We also have this flashcard mode, which will turn each word into a dedicated flashcard to help you remember them. Now, once you feel you've mastered a word, you can click mastered and go up here to see all your mastered terms versus the terms you're still learning. Now, before we get to our settings panel, let's take a look at notes. Basically, any notes you've taken on text throughout the book will appear here. You can see we have landscape mode. Now, this does not have automatic landscape mode, but you can enable it if you prefer from settings. We also have about the author. So you have a breakdown of the author as well as his previous publications. You have sync to furthest read page. So anytime you've gone back through a book, you may want to jump to where you last left off and it'll take you right to it. 
Now, if you look in the lower left corner, you'll see we have a reading progress indicator here, which is customizable. So if you want a different progress indicator, just go up to settings, go up to reading progress. You can see you have location in the book, which is kind of useless, but you have page in the book, which is the actual page of the print copy. You have time left in the chapter. So based on how fast you're reading, it does estimate how much time you have left in the chapter. So in my case, that's nine minutes. Or you have time left in the book. So right now it estimates about two hours and 35 minutes left to read the remainder of this book. Or alternatively, you can just turn it off. Another feature here is called WordWise. This is mostly geared toward younger readers, but you can enable this. Basically, what will happen is that it will look for terms in the book that are difficult to understand, possibly for younger readers. So if you look closely at the text now, some of these terms have been highlighted with a quick hint. Now, some of these terms have additional hints that you can select here. So for example, holy could mean a number of things here. So you can tap on it and bring up multiple hints. Now you can manage WordWise by selecting the lower right corner here, and you can select the number of hints that are highlighted. So if it's off too many hints for very basic terms, you can reduce it to more difficult terms. You can also enable or disable the feature here as well. Under our settings panel, this is where we have controls such as airplane mode. So we can turn on airplane mode if you want. You can manage your Wi-Fi networks here as well. You can also see your registration. This is where you can deregister your device if you prefer, so you can sell it to somebody else. You also have your device options. Under device options, you have things like device passcode, which you can enable if you want, parental controls, which you can set. We also have our screen light controls here, and this allows us to enable something called night light, which basically will dial back screen brightness as your eyes adjust to reading. So over the course of reading, the book, the backlight automatically dials back, or front light as they call it. Now you can personalize your Kindle as well, so you can change the device name. So right now it says Michael's third Kindle, and I can adjust it if I want here. You can also disable recommended content, which appears in the cover view on the home page, which is on by default. So now if we go to the home page, you can see all that recommended content disappears. We also have something called send to Kindle email. So if you email documents to the address they provide, it will format it for the Kindle, and it will automatically appear here. We also have our language and dictionary, so you can select the available languages here. I do get a lot of questions on which languages the Kindle supports and which characters the Kindle supports. So here you can see there's just two pages of them, but it gives you an idea of what this Kindle is capable of. You can also add different language keyboards if you prefer. And then we have our available dictionaries to pick from. There's just two of them here. So if you go to here, you can see the standard one is the new Oxford American Dictionary for the US. And of course, the Oxford Dictionary of English. Under reading options, you can see you can disable the vocabulary builder, which is on by default. We also have page refresh, so you can have the display refresh every time you make a page turn. Otherwise, it will refresh the page or the screen every five turns or something like that. We also have page press, and if you go here, this allows you to control the behavior of these buttons. So you can disable them if you prefer. We also have the pressure sensitivity setting, so if you want lower or higher, you can select that here as well. We also have our social networks, which includes Facebook, Twitter, and Goodreads, so we can log into those accounts. And we have all of our notes and highlights, which you can turn on and off. Now, if we go back to the home screen, there's a few other options that appear here, including the experimental browser. So the experimental browser we've seen before on other Kindles. Again, e-ink isn't the best technology uh, for browsing the web just because you have to, the, the refresh rate is so low here for e-ink technology, but it's pretty responsive with this latest panel. So you can see we can pinch in and out to zoom in on our text. Again, very slow to respond. Of course, you can't play video or anything like that here. Now you can bring up article mode, which will strip away all the ads, all the graphics and that sort of thing and just bring up the text. And you can swipe through here to read your text. We can also go up here to enter in a website or we can select different searches. So we can do Google, My Items, All Text, Kindle Store, Goodreads, and Dictionary as well as Wikipedia. We also have View Special Offers, and this allows us to see all the available special offers that appear either on your lock screen or on the home screen at the bottom edge. We also have a List View for the home screen, or you can go back to the Cover View. List View is actually very similar to older Kindles. You can also create a new collection. This allows us to organize our books into collections. So if I want to create a sci-fi collection, all I have to do is name it, click OK and select the books from my collection that qualify for sci-fi. So evolution here, as well as the road. So now you can see I have my sci-fi collection right here. Now when I'm on the home screen, I can tap and hold any one of these items and act upon them. So for example, I can add or remove items to my collection, rename them, delete them, that sort of thing. If I have a book here, I can have it removed from my device and other actions as well. We also have something called Kindle Free Time. This is kind of a kid mode. So basically this limits their access to the device. It allows you to control what content is available to them. So you can select age appropriate books and they don't have access to the store so they can't make purchases on your account. 
So in the end, there's a lot to like about the Kindle Voyage. It's definitely the best e-reader you can buy right now. With that nice flush display with that anti-glare coating. A pin sharp high resolution display that makes all text look really sharp and clear. We also have that nice deep contrast with bright whites and deep blacks. And then we have a really nice lighting mechanism here which evenly lights the display with no blotchiness or edge leaking like I've seen with other lit e-readers. I'm also really impressed by the performance of the Voyage with a really quick refresh rate and the interface is responsive and quick and the interface design itself is nice and simple and pretty intuitive. Now there are quite a few benefits of a dedicated e-reader over a standard tablet. The biggest reason probably is the e-ink technology which means the display reads like paper which means it's a little less fatiguing on the eyes. This display also means it can be fully viewed outdoors in bright sunlight conditions unlike most tablets. It's also much more battery efficient so battery lasts weeks not just hours on this e-reader which means they can make the battery much smaller so it's much lighter than any other tablet so it feels a lot more comfortable to handle over long reading periods. E-readers are also more durable because they do not have a glass front panel which can shatter. Alrighty guys hope you enjoyed this video of the Kindle Voyage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.